Contrary to what it looks like from my PNSO reviews, I'm not a completist. Because of limited cache and space, I focus on models that rest on a tripod of three legs, sculpting, paint application, and scientific accuracy, or at least plausibility. The way things used to be, you'd get an announcement from the usual suspects like Safari and Collecte about a limited number of offerings for the coming year. You knew immediately what you liked, what was a pass, and once committed, that was it for the year. PNSO changed the game in two ways. First, it produced models that consistently had all three legs, generally well researched, great sculpted detail, and much better paint applications than other figures. And second, it started to release models the year round, so there was always something to look forward to. So my collection has become quite PNSO heavy in the last year or so. But there have been many really nice sculpts from other companies, and I want to do a video or two to give them some love and appreciation. And I can think of no better company to start with than Safari Limited. I have a fondness for Safari because it used to produce the Carnegie Collection, which is how I was introduced to more accurate dinosaur models. And when the Carnegie Collection ceased, Safari Limited was left. I forced myself to keep it to my top 10, and while not all have that tripod, they really stand out to me. Many of these were sculpted by Doug Watson. I won't include mammals, <laughs> because there's just no way I'd be able to keep it to 10. So, first is the 2017 Silophysis. Silophysis is one of the rare Triassic dinosaurs that feature in mainstream dinosaur books and of course, the Walking with Dinosaur series. It's the only Silophysis I have and a beauty by Doug Watson. At 22 centimeters or 8.6 inches and an adult length of 3 meters or about 10 feet, this is about 1 to 13 scale. It's a convincing example of why keeping to a consistent scale like 1 to 40 or even 1 to 35 sometimes won't work because it would have lost a lot of detail. Now starting at the head, just look at the fineness of the facial scales and filaments. Now see how that's complemented by the mix of colour, an almost translucent blue over a white applied equally delicately. And even the red accent here is so gently applied, it doesn't mess with the illusion. Now down the body, you get these very finely sculpted feathers. The detail is really good in the little teeth. The arms, and the legs too. And it even has these vestigial fork digits here. The tail is so gently and naturally curved, you don't even notice the tripod. It looks as if it's just briefly contacted the ground in a course of natural movement. I like this colour scheme, um, it's very similar to this book cover here. I liked it here, and I like it here too. And although the orange is just one simple wash, the flatness isn't bad at this small size, and due to the shadow from the texture. And down the tail, you see how naturally these bands appear. So it's puzzling you didn't have this crudely painted black streak, threatening to spoil the whole effect. A really good sculpt complemented with a nice paint job and gifted to a non-flagship dinosaur makes it all the more praiseworthy. Now number 9 is the 2015 Sauropelter, and still one of my favourites. Now what stood out for me in this Nodosaurid was as an example of how good Safari sculpting is. It's only 18 centimeters or 7.1 inches and about 1 to 28 scale, but look at all that detail. From the nose to the tail tip.
see these large scutes that transition in the sacral shield into a different morphology, and the countless smaller ossicles filling in between. You get, of course, the lateral spikes here. And while the paint application in the body is disappointingly simple, essentially just one flat colour in the keratinous bits, the spikes. Even the small ones here, the claws, and even the beak have all had a wash applied to them to bring out detail. So it's really a pity that more effort could not be made here. Again, this is a common theme with Safari Limited, inconsistency of paint apps not just across models, but within the same model itself, again done by Doug Watson. Number 8 is the 2016 Mashiachosaurus. The Mashiachosaurus belongs to a group called the Noasaurids, which are within the clade Abelisauria, though lacking the bizarre arms of the Abelisaurids. And surprisingly to my knowledge, no one else has done this dinosaur. In fact, every time I saw this on the shelf, I assumed it was by Collecte, with a penchant for obscure species. And only in preparing this video did I realize it's actually from Safari, so credit to them. Also a Doug Watson sculpt. At 20 centimeters and 7.8 inches, an estimated length of 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet, this model is a nice 1 to 10 scale. Another example of why it can be desirable to have different scales, it would surely have lost many details like the scale detail here. Now, characteristic features are captured in this little model. For example, the downturned mandible and these very bizarre procumbent teeth. Other nice little details are these vestigial fourth digits here. And most pleasing of all, look at this paint application. How nicely blended and faded this is. The transition down the body, the boundaries of the stripes, They've even added an orange highlight near the tail tip here. It's an example of how good the paint can be on a safari figure, and such a puzzle why others are painted so horribly. The only nitpicks are the simplicity of the teeth, surely the USP of this dinosaur, and the claws. Unfortunately, it uses enlarged feet for balance, but it's not as egregious as in some collectees, and it does allow for this very pleasing, natural position of the tail. And now we come to some sauropods, my favourite dinosaur group. First is this 2017 Diplodocus, which updated the only other one I had up to that point, this good old Carnegie. Now first, just the overall form of the sauropod is much improved and in keeping with modern reconstruction. The neck and tail position, the relatively gracile limbs, the head, You also have these spinal scutes running the length of the animal, an idea I first learned about when I watched the Walking with Dinosaurs Diplodocus episode. The pose of this natural amble 
also calls to mind the Diplodocus scenes from that series and still manages to convey an elegance that doesn't detract from the ponderosity of the animal. And speaking of walking with dinosaurs, the idea of highly flexible tails used for communication is nicely shown here too. The correctly shaped feet are a delight, because as any sauropod enthusiast will tell you, we almost have an ide fix on feet when assessing any sauropod model. The paint job is simple, almost schematic-like, but what saves it is that the lighter colour allows some of the base dark to show through. And this border here isn't too stark, and so avoids the child with a marker look. There's a softness to the colour that creates a very surreal effect, and so while I wish it was painted with more complex realism, it isn't an eyesore, and actually quite soothing to look at. My only complaint? The size. At 60cm or 236 inches, accounting for the curl in the tail, and an adult length of 27 meters or 88.5 feet, this is 1 to 45 scale. And compared to this, well, you can see what a downgrade the size is. Number 6 is the 2018 Malawi Saurus. Now, here's an interesting one. At an estimate of 60 meters or 52 feet, this 36 cm or 14 inch model is about 1 to 45 scale. Malawi Saurus is pretty small by Titanosaur standards. I like the form of this model. With general pose and and most unusually, this enormous bat-like belly. Now, skews are known in titanosaurs, and here very nicely sculpted in bowl relief, though too evenly spaced for my liking. The short head with this downturned jaw are nicely captured. The hand lacks the thumb claw, a condition suggested to be common to the titanosaurs, so it's nice to see that here. The colour scheme and unusual tiger stripe pattern is also eye-catching, making it stand out in a sea of drab sauropods on the shelf, even at this small size. And for number 5, we now come to one of the handsomest models on my shelf. This is a 2019 Camarasaurus, and while many sauropods can be a blur, Camarasaurus is distinctive in its proportions, relatively modest size, and its box-like skull. And all this is captured wonderfully. And while it's an update to my beloved Carnegie, for example in the beak and the position of the nostrils, it also complements it so well they go together on my shelf. It's not like the slender Diplodocus and its compact stockiness is captured nicely. And yet, as hefty as it is, there's a grace to it in the way it's posed. Especially love the upraised forelimb here. Contrasting with the bulk, it makes this look like a bruiser that, while ponderous, could be relatively light on its feet. Of course, the horseshoe and thumb claw are there as well. And just about any angle you look at it, it's just amazing. And again by Doug Watson, who probably qualifies for a Safari Limited MVP award. But what lets down the sculpt, as you'll see in many safaris, is the paint application. For example, the beak could have been better painted to highlight it. And the sharp demarcation in the face and the oral margin really look bad. But the left looks a little better thanks to this mixing of grey. In other areas such as here and here, 
you'll see a softer blending, which is quite acceptable. So the inconsistency of the paint application makes it even more frustrating. This is promising to be really long, so I'm going to split the video into two parts. I'll see you for part two.